Hey baby, what's good? What's popping? If you can hear my voice, <laughs> gentle people of the world, you know, we have to we're, we're inclusive over here. You are now tuned in to Jess Finesse Presents. Uh happy Friday. It's another Friday in this wretched, wretched country. Because uh-huh. this country will never not be wretched. Until um you know what? I don't want them to start bugging my phone. So let me not say anything yes, that cool. I haven't signed up for NIN, so I'm still in the clear, I think. Um, but yeah, we're in a useless country, but we're going to pot anyway. This week, we have a very special guest because all my guests are special, but they are special in their own special way. We have none other than the head of operations and commercial partnerships for Africa of Audio Mac. That is a handful. That is a mouthful to say. I call him AAA, but Ade was popping. Hi, Jess. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. It's really nice what you guys are doing here with your podcast. I've been a fan for a while. You need to get loose. I beg that one is too... No, no, I'm it's just, too, you know, don't I, worry. this is my first podcast. So I have to Wait, sorry, I'm a question. For a while. Why don't you call it Triple A? Is it Ade Audio Mark? No, 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 no. Like, my middle name is Ade Boyega. So it's like Ade Ami, Ade Boyega, Ade Tunji. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I thought Audio Mark was there. No, so, no, but that, that could work too, but nah. <laughs> Sha- his, na- his, his, his social media name is Ade underscore AAA. So I just say wow. Ade Triple A. Triple A rated. You know? Mm-hmm. Actually, I think Triple A... Don't worry. Let me not get off topic. <laughs> um, I did thank you for, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, hopefully, any artist that is calling your phone right now, <laughs> um, they don't have any problem on the Audio Mac platform nah. trying to release their music. Doing nah, everything's music's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. We're, we're organized. Wake up early. <laughs> we thank Set them. So, like I said, thank you for, you know, stepping out of the office, um, you know, not being on the clock uh, to pod with us for a couple hours. Nah. You know? Nah, thank you for inviting me. Like, you know, you're always on the clock when you're just really trying to, you know, expand like what audio max really about and like you know trying to get like more podcasts on the platform so i feel as if this is like it's always work when it comes down to things like this so so maybe we're even trying to court this guy to give us to give (laughs) us podcasts uh, you know podcast push you know you push them please i'm available (laughs) um but yeah so uh you know how this part goes we talk about pop culture i'm not i'm not in the business of like so when were you, you know, what year were you born? Where, where were you raised? I mean, we could probably ask that in like casually, but that's not the premise of this pod. I love to bring interesting people, um, people that maybe the average person may not have access to. And we, you know, we, we talk Exclusive about pop people. culture, oh. you know, <laughs> little, little by little. Um, but as we talk about pop culture, we have to do something very special. This, this act is very special to me. And we smoke Gary. Oh, okay. Okay. I just, just want to like be slurping on your on your mics and everyone be like, oh, <laughs> he eats so disgustingly. You know, I just don't I don't embarrass myself. So, um, the thing about this is, since you can't form mukbang or like ASMR, you just have to use style. You know. Talk, yeah, fair, talk, fair, fair. Talk, I'll talk, just talk, I'll just be talk. I'll just be like moving away from the mic every time. So yeah, okay. exactly, okay. exactly. So we're gonna get right into it because I know you have a busy day and I want to get you back to the office. So, it's a very important question to ask all my guests. Um, and this question will determine a lot of things. Like, whether we'll still be friends after the pod. <laughs> uh, whether I will still use the Audio Mac platform. Wow. You know, pressure, whether we will pressure. still upload our episodes on there. Pressure. Okay? Pressure. And the question is this. White or yellow? Uh, white. White Gary, please. Uh, or you're yellow. Yellow. I'm a yellow, I'm a yellow babe. Why but not? Come on. Gary so sad though. Like. It's not. It's very... It's that sad. The thing, the taste in the, that that thing has in your mouth is sad. I mean, since I like, let's try new things today. So let's try this. I'm on a roll. This is what we need. To if do. it doesn't taste nice, you know, it's, it's on you. It. See, no, no, not really. I mean, maybe once or twice, like long time ago. <laughs> When's the last time you 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 drank Gary? Last week, night. I drink Gary like all the time, but then you know, just not in public. <laughs> so we're getting him to drink Gary in public. Yeah, so I you feel guys, honored. You guys must be special. <laughs> Big facts. Um, I we need to do a thing, right? I think we should get a board that has a tally. Of how many guests uh, do white and how many, many do, do yellow? Because I will soon. I think white what? is in the lead, but it was my yellow will soon catch up. It's mainly white, like mainly white. out of all your guests, like you've had like up to ten guests now, so it's mainly been white. I think, Gary. I think you're the eighth. I think you're the eighth guest or ninth oh, okay. guest. Eighth guest. Eighth guest. Oh, and early majority, days, early days. If, if it was like a white to yellow, white is in the lead. Like it's probably. Are you, sure? you guys should actually do. It. You guys need yes. to do a tally. You guys need sure. to do a tally. Yes, yeah. um, we Moyo. have mm-hmm. Moyo. Moyo. Do they all like finish oh, the Gary actually, as well? Like I want to know like how the Gary etiquette here. Does everyone like slurp it all up and like? So for the most part, we everyone, all finish. 
One person did two. two. Shout out to Toyin. Nah, nah. Um, I'm not breaking that record, Chad. And then, <laughs> yes, no. and then, like, there's a lot of times, I'm not going to cap. Sometimes I let my joint soak. I don't finish it. But Ooh. I'm going to try to finish it today. All I'm right. trying to finish my let's, food. Let's run it. Let's run it. Table etiquette today. But okay, so here's a handy dandy bowl. Uh, you guys are such, such fancy bowls. <laughs> Is it fancy? Kind of. Your spoon? <laughs> okay, so now, when you drink Gary at home, right? Because you, rep- you need to replicate and reenact how you do it at, in your house. No, I'm usually just watching something on, on my laptop. Okay, well, we can't watch nothing. There. We can watch each other. We can Basically, gaze in each, each other's uh, <laughs> eyes as we smoke Gary. It's a Gary date. Um, What things do you put in your Gary? I mean, you guys have everything. You know, it all depends on like what's available. So, I mean, the situation, you know, ground nuts, staple, sugar. Okay. Yeah, we good. We good. Okay. Milk or chocolate powder? None of the above. <laughs> really? Do people put milk in their Gary? What? I've been hearing about that, but I've actually never seen anyone. Oh, well, I thought it was like a myth. there's no milk, I'm not drinking. <laughs> you're, you're a milk person. Started at school. For good measure, year. please raise up your... Raise up, raise up the white Gary. We're going to do a toast. <laughs> <laughs> like, does it have to be open? Well, it can be open. It can be closed. But yeah, thank the... you for, you know, coming to <laughs> smoke thank Gary you. in public. Thank you. With thank the family you. on Just Finesse Presents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Are you someone that can drink like... Two bowls in one day. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what, what foods are on. So, so are yeah. you, like, what, can can your fridge be fully stocked and you'll be like, screw this fridge, I'm gonna go drink it. No, no, no. So Gary it's like when there's nothing there, and there's nothing there a lot of the time. So <laughs> yeah. Do you cook? Not well. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting context. I'm getting context. Okay, so prepare your bowl, and then when you prepare your bowl, we can start yeah. with the topics. <laughs> I will forever call these things chocolate powder, even in my house. <laughs> no, it's not. We don't. They don't sponsor us, so we don't call that name. Fair. We don't chocolate call that name. Smart, smart, smart. You don't want to get any it's copyright chocolate, strikes. It's chocolate granules, chocolate powder, Makes uh, sense. artificially flavored, choco flavored, whatever. But it's not what you just call it. <laughs> okay, so you've taken your first bite. I want you to do us the honors and lift up the first fan. Lift up the first fan. Yes. It says, North Korea's Kim Jong-un reportedly <laughs> banned skinny jeans for promoting capitalistic lifestyle. <laughs> Interesting. So, I don't know if it's ignorant to say this, but um, we have our own Nigeria's version of Kim Jong-un that we're suffering from, aka Buhari. Oh. It's probably not as radical. Probably not. Actually, I'm not about to start comparing, you know, <laughs> evil leaders. I'm not going to start doing that. But um, this news skipped my radar when it happened. So, Ayo, do you want to provide context? Okay, so basically, like, for jeans at large, yeah, North Korean leadership has already viewed, like, blue-colored denim to be a symbol of American imperialism for years. So basically, he doesn't like jeans because he thinks that blue jeans is synonymous with, like, the American culture. So he's trying to reduce the influence that Americans have on Korea or North Korea, at least. That's the idea. He also banned mullet as a hairstyle as well. So he's so. calling blue. So blue jeans is haram. Blue jeans is what, please? Haram. What's haram? Haram, like Boko Haram, is the is the like they don't. Well, I don't know the technical way to say, it, but it's um the avoidance. Like they don't want the influence of Western culture. Oh, okay. So I think haram is like forbidden. Forbidden or. Proscribed by Islamic laws. That's the dictionary meaning of Haram. Okay, so I'm I'm a little off, but you're yeah, not off actually. Yeah, something that's forbidden. Yeah, forbidden. but you said in re- in relation to like Islamic laws. Yeah, so it's just Islamic. Yes. Yeah, Islamic. So in this situation, it's just he's banned it for like Koreans, North uh, Koreans. Yeah, yeah, yeah for North people. Koreans. That's crazy though. Almost um, crazy, yo. like, but those actually like still wear skinny jeans because skinny jeans isn't really a thing anymore. Are your jeans not? Are your jeans not skinny right now? Yeah, like okay. my last day I wear skinny jeans. Like, apart from these jeans, I, I mean, when well, you're I mean, wearing native, that makes you look like you're an Abuja boy looking for contracts. Other than that, I see you wear skinny pants. Are you talking about I like? Know, I get what you mean. Like you wear skinny pants, but like skinny jeans as like you remember when like um, I think it was 20, 2010, 2011, 2012 when Teach Me How to Dig it was like a thing. Like skinny jeans was the sh- shit that time. Do you get what I mean? But now yeah. most like no fashion brand. There's I, I can't. I'm trying to think of every fashion collection I have seen. Of late, 
it's kind of everything's Nobody, kind of going baggy now. Yeah, anyway, everybody, so. everybody's going baggy, straight cuts. <laughs> Nobody is really doing skinny jeans or skinny anything. But skinny jeans, I still believe skinny jeans is like a staple fashion piece. Like, staple. In terms of like, like people still it's rock still, them, like, there's something like someone, you're someone talking still from wears somebody, skinny jeans. You, you own an online men's fashion magazine. So, of course, you're looking at it from uh, men's fashion brands or like fashion houses are not, mm. are not uh, following that trend. Mm. But like people that are not into fashion, those people, you still go to markets, bring skinny jeans. <laughs> and we shall buy it. I kind of think North Korea okay, has bigger I, I, I problems than skinny jeans, though. So. I mean, <laughs> you know, that one's up there. But that's crazy still. Shout though. out to North Koreans, man. Shout out to you. Unfortunately, they probably won't be able to hear this, though. Don't they have like banned internet there? Right. Sad. Sorry. Yeah, they ban. They ban. Like, or they control their internet. Like, like, yeah, so. That's so so sad, they man. control news, they control mm. access to information, so all that stuff. How do you get stuff. this info? That one's up there. Somebody, <laughs> somebody's using illegal internet to come and to tell come what's happening in South yeah, from North Korea. Or they probably called their friends or told somebody about it. Anyway, I don't know what to tell them. I don't know if they're gonna like have a you know a protest. I don't if you if they remove skinny jeans from your wardrobe, like I don't yeah, I mean <laughs> Would you protest if uh, if it was like a skinny jean ban in Nigeria? No. I can't remember. The only time I wear jeans is when I get on like skinny jeans is when I'm on power bikes. If I wear any other type of jeans, it's like really baggy. But then that's a different conversation for another day because like, I don't know if I want to get that vulnerable on this pod, but there was a time when I lost a lot of my wardrobe when I got evicted from my flat. So like all the jeans I had were like destroyed. So I don't even, this jeans conversation, like I can't even relate because most of the things I wear now are like track pants and stuff like that. Jeans are uncomfortable anyway, to be fair. So, like, it's better with, like, sweatpants now. Everyone's kind of on that wave now. So. Yeah, it's either you're wearing jeans for, like, aesthetic purposes, like, mm. for a look or, like, for um, durability. So, like, if you're riding, I, it makes sense to wear mm. jeans. Uh, so, maybe he did it for their benefits So now. <laughs> See the Technically. angle. See the angle. See, Kim Jong-un, not, not all bad all the time. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not. not he's, I'm not he's yeah, he's... he's <laughs> um, anyways, Kim Jong-un, please do better. Next, um, fam. Drake recently won Artist of the Decade Ooh. at the Billboard Music Awards. If we had a category like that in Night, which artist do you think would win that same award? Ooh, that's tough. For the for what, the, the decade that just passed or like the upcoming decade? I would assume let's just, okay, if we're gonna convert it from this Drake instance, it'll probably be the decade that just passed. Actually, that's good to you. You want this person to enter wow. trouble? Decade, that's that's no, not that's not why he came. I, don't know, I mean, I feel as if like there, it all depends, you know, on like who's like judging really, or like you know whose fan base really just wants to like come out the most, and, like really just want to give them the award. But like, there's so many people that have been doing so many great things over the past decade. Like clearly, like the Wiz Kids, the Davidos, the Burners, even the Tiwa Savages. Really, like there's so many people that have just been doing a lot of like great work and like putting Afro beats on like the map. So like, I can't really say who like the main artist of the decade is but like that's just for like the critics to like decide that you know but, but like at the same time you know you just have to just appreciate good music still right I feel. see that was so a beautiful people. media trained audio mic <laughs> answer I love it don't worry Hello. see the first thing you said is it depends on who's judging first of all in this Drake example it was Billboard that mm-hmm. gave him the award right we don't have no equivalent like what would be the judging body right in, in the naturally. first place like I don't know. We have like, Hedies. what's the name of the award? Hedies? No, yeah, like no, the Hedies do that. No, Hedies should not be the ones. No, 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 no. Sound City. No. Sound City. No. Like we have, Maybe we have our Sound people. City. We just have to. I feel as if with all these things, we also have to like the people also kind of have to give like the value to it or like believe that they are like valid. So that's the only way like the artists themselves will cherish the awards too. But like I don't know, you know, they probably just need to do a better job promoting the awards yeah. themselves or something. Yeah, I mean that that's a different. That's we can spend a whole another episode yeah. talking about that. But even still, so now we we have the in in the Drake example is Billboard that gave the award. Mm-hmm. So now obviously Billboard has metrics. So, I think even with the with the perfectly media trained amazing audio mic answer you gave, <laughs> it talks about like how these people have done like amazing and prolific things mm-hmm. that will grant them the 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 validity to get such a word, right? Mm-hmm. But like that's all those all those criteria that you mentioned are subjective. Like what are yeah. some objective things we'd have to look at? Like what streaming like well I mean objectively uh, streaming it, on DSPs yeah award number of awards you've probably gotten in your whole you know career uh reach engagement like what are we using to yeah, even 
I mean, measure. Yeah, I mean, like nowadays data. with tech, I mean, there are obvious things that like you can see, like oh, like who is streaming the most, or like who has won the most awards, or like. But then I don't know. I think like artistry is also so different. Like you can't just use like art in, in and of itself is like a subjective thing. Mm-hmm. Like so, it all depends on like what you're feeling at the time. Mm-hmm. So like I don't know why we would want to put like something so objective on such a subjective like concept that is like music and art. So you're saying it doesn't make sense to actually award awards like artists of the decade. I think not that it doesn't make sense. It kind of just doesn't matter, you know, because I mean, even like last year, Drake won, I can't remember what it was. I think it was the American Billboard Award or something. There was something he said and like, he was like, it doesn't really matter like if you have an award, but if they're like fan, fans that like actually come to like check out your Grammys. music. It was a Grammy. When, when yeah. Travis Scott lost what? to, when Travis Scott lost to Cardi B for a rap yeah. album. And he like, was hurt too. But I mean, at the end of the day, you really shouldn't like, I feel as if like, all these things, it doesn't really validate you, you know. Validation comes from, like, yourself and, like, your fans and, like, who really, like, cares about your music, you know. So, like, it doesn't really matter who the... Doing music forward, what is Audio Max plan for African music, Nigerian music especially? Um, well, I mean, from what you've seen, like, what we've done presently, we're really just trying our best to, like, promote the African music scene. Um, we've done, like, quite a few initiatives on ground as well, like our... <clears throat> like last year in Ghana, we did the Rising Star Challenge where we like made artists like upload their music and like fans voted for what like the best um, song was. So we really try our best, like have initiatives on ground that like try and promote and like showcase the best music forward. Um, we recently released like our content series, um, Hometown Heroes playlist that just dropped. Gunshot! Shameless, shameless plug, shameless bow, plug. Bow, 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 bow. Like, um, you know, we're just trying our best to like, we're really just trying our best to, you know, display the African story in the best African way, like using African storytellers as well. So we also have like our Audio Mac World um, editorial section where we actually have sit down and like do interviews with a lot of like top artists as well. So we really just try our best to like showcase African music to like the rest of the world and like promote it on ground as well so I feel as if that's really what we're really about just moving music forward and just moving good music forward really so two things um, first one's a shameless plug, plug because the artist that won overall for that Africa Rising Jess um, Jess ETA uh, yeah, he's I shot he was my first flex list photo artist in September yeah, 2019 he's dope. he's dope that guy is so bloody fire once again yeah, uh, this is a S, this is an S God stand account um, S guy was on the song that um I did the flex list editorial oh, content nice, for. Nice, nice, nice. So that's really dope that you know discovered not I didn't discover him, but like being Ooh. able to meet him, link with him, and then do that stuff for my playlist, and then see how many yeah. months later you know full circle and he's winning awards, uh, winning no, that's, competitions. That's dope. Like that's dope. We're always really looking out for like really talented artists, of people that we could collaborate with right. in that way, and he's he clearly has a bright future. Facts. Oh yeah. So is it my turn? Yes. yes it is. Your do turn. you feel like? Like I said, myself, my podcast producer, we, we think you're representing Audio Mac very well. Thank you. Especially with this being your first podcast. And yeah. I think it's really fire. Like, there definitely needs to be more spaces where you gatekeepers, because you're a gatekeeper, whether you believe it or I not. Li- I don't like that word. It doesn't matter. I'm everybody, telling you what you are. Everybody's a gatekeeper. You're a gatekeeper no, to this podcast. No, it yeah, just depends on like, this how is, high no, you want your gate no. to be. If nobody wants to come on this pod, last last me and I will just be partying every Friday. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Now that's what Joe Budden them did. Well, and look at what happened to Joe Budden them. Ooh, um, but too anyway, soon, too soon, too very too <laughs> soon. Ouch, open wound. Um, now, nah, but like I said, I I think it's really cool when, uh, y'all you know really important people because you are important. You know, come out, step out the office, and pull up to these type of spaces. And it's not as rigid as like an interview, but you still have the opportunity to say, okay, hey, this is what we do. Because I think there's a lot of people that still there's a lot of myths about Audio Mac. That are like floating in the air. It's... Yeah, I don't know if you you're privy to them because I feel like I hear a lot of stuff every day. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably have to filter, you know, the stuff out or like just have tunnel vision and be like, I can't be bothered. But it's cool when you you know out here saying, okay, this is what we're doing for Africa. So let nobody go and miss yarn. Mm. It's like if you hear this podcast, you heard it from the horse's mouth. Mm. What they doing in Africa? Make good music, experience, and get playlisted on 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 you know initiatives like Hometown Heroes, um, Audio Mac World. All right. You get popping enough, maybe you can get a slot in next year's concert. You know? <laughs> so, I think that's really cool. But without further ado, let me pick up the next fan. Hopefully, it's the Hometown Heroes fan. Or you could just, you know, switch it up. Um, the hometown Heroes you, we're not, technically, <laughs> technically, we're not supposed to look at the fans. You're not. Uh, but we already broke the rules uh, since, so it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. It's I not tell. the Hometown Heroes fan. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, in, we'll get there. In we'll get there. Y'all's, we'll get there build up. In y'all's opinion... What makes a complete music artist? So I guess what makes the ideal music artist? Well, I mean, I keep saying this, but I feel as if like the ideal 
artist these days is just someone that like has access or like is connected with his fans to a, in a way that's like more than the not ideal artist in that sense. I feel as if like artists these days like understand like their metrics, their numbers, where their fans are, how they can utilize like DSPs like Audio Mac to, you know, find where they're gaining their listeners and connect with them on a on a stronger basis. I feel as if COVID like really made people realize that like even when the shows aren't there, you still have to find ways to like connect with your people. And people and artists that have found ways to do that and like utilizing like their social media and like their DSPs and like just their, you know, brand equity in the in and on themselves have like found ways to like have the long lasting careers. And those are the people that will always, you know, stay on top. So I feel as if the ideal artist is just the artist that like caters to his fans and like makes music that's true to himself and doesn't seem fake, I guess. The media train is the media training for me. <laughs> it's the what media the training for giving? me. No, could definitely not be as deep as that. <laughs> um, I, I got a question. Um, and I I know you're taking mental notes as per you want to blow. Uh, blow. I'm trying to. What? Blow. Okay, so people say, not just you, but you said it, so we're gonna bring it up. You know, connecting with fans, mm. engaging your fans, having a fan base. Mm. This might sound like a basic question, but how do you even? gain fans because I feel like I, a I lot of people don't really understand I don't have fans so I would the <laughs> no so okay now but from a <laughs> from a music business executive standpoint who works with artists who you are advising them like yo y'all need to actually engage with your fans mm. before you can even start coming to some of these you know platforms for support from the basic level what are ways that artists can gain fans and this is why I asked the question you'll see a lot of emerging artists that will just you know you know, put out music. Um, I'm not going to start, you know, judging the reasons why, but maybe, you know, lack of resource or whatever, mm-hmm. or just just plain ignorance to just not being enlightened about what they should do. You just put out music and then you just mm-hmm. think that, okay, streams means fans, when that's not the case. Because mm-hmm. a passive person that heard your song is not your fan. Yeah. I don't think people even understand what, at the core, is a fan. Mm-hmm. So from your own end, your own two cents, your own, you know, your own hot take, mm-hmm. what, what are tip like what are ways to actually gain genuine fans that have retention like have a high retention rate that have you know brand loyalty to you and all that and things like that well oh, i mean i don't i'm not going to like give an answer because i'm not i don't have any fans myself so i'm not sure if this will work but like okay. i feel on a on a case by case basis i feel as if like the most the people that have the most ones are kind of the people that like are always in your face but not in an annoying way, if okay. that makes any sense. I, like, they're I always kind of, like, around. And, like, they're just, like, people that have found what their fans want and, like, what their fans, like, really engage with. Like, someone like Black Bones, for instance, I, I like using him as an example because I feel he's the he's one of the few artists that I feel, like, really utilizes, like, social media the best, mm-hmm. I feel. Because, like, he's always, like, coming up with skits or he's always coming up with, like, things that, like, just make him seem, like, more of, more than just, like, a rapper. A, a rapper. So I feel as if, like, a lot of the time now, like, the mu- with the music industry, it's not just... It's sad that, like, it's not just good music anymore that, like, you know, takes you up. You have to be kind of more than just what you are in that sense. And you have to kind of be, like, kind of, like, everything and nothing to your fans at the same time. So I feel as if you just need to, like, know why your fans like you and then just keep adding to that. <laughs> oh, wow, this is a trap. What Does Audio Mac have any plans for podcasting? <laughs> Uh, I mean, bong, bong, wow. bong, bong. so I mean, like at the end of the day, you know, we're always trying to encourage, <laughs> we're always just trying to encourage like creators to like be up on the platform. Um, a lot of people don't even know like we have the podcast um, option on the platform, you know. So we're really just trying to like amplify like sounds from everyone. So I believe that you know we're going to get way more podcasts up, and hopefully we'll do some sponsor do some, some podcasts. Or, well. Trying to trap me, <laughs> but like you know, hopefully we'll do some cool stuff. Like we have, we also have like the audio my podcast coming out soon as well. Actually, since this comes out like in seven days, mm-hmm. it might already launch, but like, I actually won't mention so that the reveal will, will be nicer. But yeah, it'll be cool. That's it'll be mad. cool, hopefully. So, so yeah. Um, what? Okay, like off the top of your head, aka head of commercial par- partnerships, what are some, what are some like examples of partnership things that podcasts could do with Audio Mac once like the platform grows even more um, I'll, I'll have to get back to you hey, on that hey, well, I was going to trap them trap. Let's... can't trap me <laughs> <laughs> lock, lock the door lock the door lock the door lock the door I'll get back to you on that but uh, yeah we'll, we'll run but like you know no, I'm, sure, I'm, sure there, I'm sure there are like because podcasting is like the new way like a lot of people are like really connected and like people really do like enjoy listening to like conversations like with people that they feel like they're connected with so right. I feel as if it's 
it's like a really good opportunity for you know for growth. So I really hope that we can do some really cool See, stuff other than just getting podcasts. Up I'm, I'm not too proud to beg. Use us as experiments. So it's, it's, uh, we're, cool we're here. Yeah. We're here. So TikTok CEO, I'm gonna mispronounce this. Zhang Yiming. You're not from there. It's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> resigns with a net worth of 44 billion US. That just gave me uh, anxiety. That's crazy though. 44 billion dollars. I mean, 44 billion are not really working anymore though. You know, it's like you're getting people to do the work not for you. So there's no point. It's <laughs> there's really no point. Like you should just like leave and just like start opening charities and like helping the world. Didn't and somebody, world on that. I think I saw somebody like quote tweet when I saw this news on Twitter. I didn't delve into it. Mm. Talking about some, he says he wants to, he said he would like, I'm going to miss you on. Let me not say it. But basically he was like, I'm going to retire and do like the most simplest of things. Like, like, yeah. Read more like, books. What, what else are you going to do? Literally, you said he wants to read more books and they dream. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like that's what you need money for. Money is to give you security to like do whatever you want now. So I'm clearly I mean, just I, a simple guy. Honestly, <laughs> so, you know. So. Oh, this is a great. This is a great way to end this pod. Before okay, it? um, looking at the Nigeria oh, yeah. music industry ten years ago, uh-huh. and looking at it now, uh, there's obviously been tremendous progress. Like yeah. tremendous progress. Um, where do you see the music industry? in the next 10 years and what changes would you like to see? Uh, well, I mean, I feel like the like last 10 years really have just been about like artists that have been like really like intentional with like their sound and like their releases, their look, like their brand image and all that. Big facts. So I feel as if like that's kind of like laid way for like the next generation of artists to be like even more conscious and like more like aware of like the power they have like as a as a brand and of themselves and like I really feel as if like the next few years we're gonna have like so many like musical like tech geniuses I feel because they'll just know how to like really utilize like all the platforms to like the best of their ability to like Thanks. connect with their fans as best as they can so like I just and I just hope that like you know artists in general like do more stuff to like be more out there in a way and like utilize like the opportunity as best as they can once they are or once they have a spotlight shining right. on them, you know. So I really hope that like they do more stuff like, you know, be it podcasting or like, you know, do things that like feel, make them feel more connected to their fans. And I really feel as if in the next 10 years, like it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting because like it's been like, because the way has been paved by like so many people before us. So like the future is like, it's crazy. Because like when you think about like the unknown and like, you know that like the music keeps getting better and better or to me anyway, hopefully it keeps getting better and better. Like I'm actually like anticipating what I'm, what I'm going to see next. So it's going to be something, it's going to be something out of this world. Cause I don't feel as if like Afro beats has peaked to like what it potentially could be. Big you know? facts. So like it's, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting next 10 years. I feel. Um, sorry. Do you see Afro beats as a genre being as big as like Latin music? It all depends on like how it's marketed and how like how many people like keep willing to like see value in it. So I feel as if we're already at that point where we're like a big genre on it of itself because everyone's like on it now. <laughs> and like everyone's trying to even make like Afrobeat music to that extent. Like Beyonce did the album, Justin Timberlake is featured sorry, Justin Timberlake, Justin Bieber featured Burner Boy on his project. Like it's getting there. Like I feel as if we're we become like a very recognizable genre. So not just about like taking that momentum and growing with it. So I feel it's only as big as we want it to be and how much the fans want to keep going at it and like how many artists keep coming out that are just like influencing the sound. So I feel that's really, that's really it. No, it's amazing though, man. Like, I said how many artists will come out and I was like... <laughs> yeah, you will soon leave this part for me. It's fine. You're just foreshadowing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I think for me, what I'm about to say... Mm, um, if you lived in an ideal society with a functioning government that actually gave a damn about its citizens, really hate the government. Man. Uh, I really, I really, really don't like them. I really, really don't like them. Um, they're the reason why my intro is another Friday in this wretched country. Um, I would like to see legislation, um, for the music industry, uh, being taken seriously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, like we're making. I mean, I'm not making. I mean, the 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 artists are making mm-hmm. a lot of money. Uh in our industry nowhere near as much as they potentially could make Mm -hmm. and I feel like we could make even more money Mm -hmm. if there was actual legislation that was really controlling a lot of things like you know 
lic- the licenses and the royalty systems that are in the West, um, they don't function here. And assuming they could function here, not only would the artists eat, the teams behind them will probably eat. The people that are, you know, working with these artists and, and by proxy are associated with these artists will, will indirectly eat. Uh, so, yeah, I would love to see legislation. But then again, I don't want legislation coming from this current wow. crop of government. No, I don't want... No, I mean, I feel as they if... They can like, keep their hands out of the pot. Yeah, I feel as if, like, all the publishing houses and people that are really striving towards, like, you know, making more structure within the industry. Like, there are a lot of lawyers I know that are out there that are, like, really trying to represent their artists to, like, maximize their careers as much as they can. So, right. and I, I feel as if we're getting there. Like, the, the industry is getting way more structured. Uh, more, like, more um, international players are coming into the market. So, like, that, that will only lead to... Hopefully, that could only lead to like more structure and at least more like accountability on the on the back end of things. So like we actually know who is producing the music and where it's coming from. So I feel I feel it's it's going to get there. And like you know, like Rome wasn't built in a day, but like I have hope that like great things are coming. As know? a gatekeeper, you so, have hope. Me, screw the government. My gatekeeper, man. I'm just screw the government. Just a common dude. Um. <laughs> so last but not least, to move this music. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, I did every episode we end the pod by allowing the guests to put us onto a song mm, that they want yeah. us exactly that they oh. want us to discover. Wow. Wow. No so I know pressure. it's a very daunting no pressure. task. No pressure. But I believe you're up to the challenge. No pressure. The no only rule pressure. is please don't go and give us music from one signed artist where they'll come and copyright <laughs> this podcast. Isn't everyone signed these days, practically? Yes, let the one that they're signing will not allow them to strike the podcast down. Thank you. Uh well I've been listening to um do you know this artist called Prey like yes like Afro, so it's really good she actually really dropped a single today but you're gonna listen to this day de- this thing seven days later so in oh, the yeah, past yeah, it's pretty good is it the, is it the single she dropped today yeah yeah yeah, yeah. come that's, on that's put her on good. that's pretty good it's called the single is called Peace of Mind it's really just like a nice little like music video with that that that's gonna caught my eye like every day Prey uh, there's quite a few artists that are doing so many yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Who? I guess so. We try to feel fine. I just We don't want to get worried. Did you know we talk sounds before the lock came here? Look at how those are really yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at how I'm putting people on. Look at how they're really pushing. Look at how they're really pushing. That. What? Like, shout out We Talk Sound. Sound. Like 49th Street. Shout out 49th Street. Look at how they're really about it. Like Hamatan Rain. Those guys are really about it. They're doing the Lord's work. Those guys are really like they're out doing there. The Lord's work. Really, like, those are, that's part of it, you know. That's really all. That's really it's all part of it. It's like having the right like journalism around like the um, I did AAA from Audio Mac. Um, I love the way that joint rolls off my tongue. Thank you for indulging us today. Thank, thank you, you for having me. No, thank you for smoking our Gary. Thank you for smoking Yellow Gary. Um, I'll let you get back to the office now. Thank you. Go work on the releases. Thank you. Artists, please don't uh, disturb his inbox. I mean, disturb it. No, you disturb it. Disturb it. Give me. Let me hear something cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, please respond. But don't come and say it picks you up and then. I, 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 I do respond. I try my best. No watch. Um, if you hear my voice, you have now listened to the Jess Finesse Presents podcast. Um, stay alive, people. That's, that's all I'm going to say. And uh, we are out. Thank you.